Race with Ryan is a kart racing game based on characters featured in the hugely successful YouTube channel Ryan's World. Aimed at children of around 3 to 6 years old, and with Christmas around the corner, is this one worth picking up for your little ones? Well, I'm Glenn for Switch Up. Thank you to the developers for the review copy, and now let's find out. Now I played this game through with my 5 year old daughter, what with her being practically in the middle of the target audience age range, and have taken her views and perspectives into account for this review. Gameplay wise, Race with Ryan has both single player and multiplayer options, and within both you can play a single race or take part in the career mode. Quick race is exactly that, a quick match where you choose your vehicle, track and difficulty setting, of which there are three, easy, normal and hard, and race one match. There is a random race option too. Career mode consists of six cups, each containing a different number of tracks. The earlier cups have three tracks, moving up to the later ones which have six. There are only six different tracks in the whole game though, which is a major disappointment, and these are just recycled throughout the various cups. Each track does include its reverse equivalent, although some of these do need to be unlocked, but to class this as 12 tracks would be a major stretch. The tracks just don't play differently enough in reverse to feel worthy of being classed as a separate track. There are also some odd design choices with this, for example a couple of the tracks have objects flying towards you as you race, rocks of lava in the pirate level and toy trains in the supermarket level, and as they come towards you in the regular level this means that they move away from you in the reverse levels. It just seems a bit odd to have to unlock a version of a track that's effectively easier than the one you've just finished. Surely they should have gone towards you in the reverse track to add a new level of challenge. The tracks themselves are fairly well designed, albeit they don't really have any major set pieces that make them stand out from each other, with it just being the setting that changes. To be fair though, each course does include a few forks in the road to mix things up a little bit and allow you to choose your path to the finish line. The game includes a number of characters from the show, with a variety of vehicles available, although some of these do again need to be unlocked first. Whilst there is a variety in the vehicles, with ships, helicopters and even a spaceship available, they do not control any differently from the standard cars and stick to the track quite closely. It's standard kart racing fare in that there are items called magic skills that will aid you in victory. These are acquired through the eggs that are laid out through the track and they are your typical power ups that have appeared in kart games since Super Mario Kart on the Super Nintendo just under a different guise. You have a paper aeroplane that's effectively your red shell homing missile, three spinning burgers that protect your cart from projectiles, a paint roller that will make you faster and stronger, again like the star in Mario Kart, and football or tennis balls that will shoot forwards or backwards from your cart, to name but a few. Control wise you accelerate by pressing down the B button, ZL will use any items or magic skills you've picked up, and ZR allows you to begin drifting. Now the vast majority of the footage you are seeing is either me playing two player with my daughter or her playing by herself. Now she's not hugely into video games and she does find it hard to coordinate the many actions that some games call for. At first this was no different, with her finding it hard to remember to steer and accelerate at the same time, inadvertently taking her finger off one of the buttons whilst concentrating on the other. There is the option though to turn on both steering or accelerator assists in the pause menu and we turned the steering assist on for my daughter for our second race. This took control of the basic steering movement for her which meant she could focus on just accelerating and using items, something that I couldn't even try to explain to her on our first race for fear of overwhelming her. Even with the assist on, the game won't drift for you, meaning that victory isn't always assured, even with it on, and it's another element that can then be introduced slowly to a younger player, if you want, before they turn the assist off altogether when ready. It's a bit like having stabilizers on a bike, and it certainly enhanced my daughter's enjoyment of the game. She even beat me with the assist on, which she was absolutely delighted about. I'll give the game credit where it's due for actually catering towards its intended target audience with features that make the game more accessible to them rather than just dumbing down the AI completely. A press of the X button will also respawn your car so if you do end up in trouble, going the wrong way for example, there is a quick and easy way to get back on track. Gameplay is fairly standard fare as far as kart races are concerned, although the lack of tracks and therefore repetition between cup competitions is disappointing and it receives 12 out of 20. Controls are easily the strongest part of the game, with everything being tight and responsive, plus some genuine fault having gone into making the game as accessible to children of all ages and skill levels as possible, and receive 18 out of 20.
Visually, Race with Ryan uses 3D modelled carts and backgrounds. Although just six tracks is disappointing, at least they do all look completely different to each other, with settings including a toy room, Fantasyland theme park, a pirate themed beach and a shopping centre. A nice use of colour is used and everything certainly looks vibrant. Some tracks seem to show a nice level of detail before hitting a bit of a lull mid-race with everything suddenly looking a bit bland. In terms of characters available, there are a number of ones to choose from such as Ryan of course, Gil, Lexa and Peck, each with a few different forms. So there will be Patrol Ryan and Pizza Delivery Ryan for example, which I'm assuming is how the show works. It's nice to see a variety of vehicles, even if the difference is only a cosmetic one and all of the characters have their own animated cutscenes which will play out before or after races. Audio wise the game is incredibly poor unfortunately. The first thing to note is the disappointing quality of the sound bites from Ryan himself. Ryan is very vocal, doing everything from announcing each option you choose, to giving a quick description of each track, to talking during the races at times, but the quality of these sound bites is quite frankly terrible. They are not woven into the rest of the audio and instead are quite crudely laid over the top and sound very disjointed. Drive like the wind! It almost sounds like they took the recordings and put them straight into the game without any refinement process at all. Other than this, the music in game is of a decent standard, being cheery enough, although it is quite heavily outweighed by the volume of the sound effects by default. Visuals are bright, colourful and there is at least some variety in the limited tracks and they score 13 out of 20. Audio on the other hand is of a poor quality overall. It's nothing that a child playing would probably even notice, but it's still something that should have been addressed by the developers and it receives 9 out of 20. Race with Ryan costs £34.99, €39.99 or $39.99 and this is the game's biggest problem. Whilst it's a fairly competent racer, much better than I was expecting I have to admit, this is an astronomical price for what essentially boils down to a game of just 6 tracks. Yes each one has its own reverse edition too, yes the tracks are used to make up 6 different cups, yes there are 3 difficulty settings and yes there are characters to unlock through natural progression, but the problem is that 6 tracks just become boring very quickly, and none of them have any real key features that make playing them in reverse feel particularly fresh. This also means that the 6 cups see a lot of the same tracks recycled as you would expect and therefore don't each feel like their own special event like they should, with each new cup bringing its own new tracks to explore and test yourself on. There is a physical version available and it's currently on base.com, just to give you some idea, for £25, which is a much more realistic price compared to the ridiculous one on the eShop and value gets 6 out of 20. To conclude, whilst Race with Ryan is certainly flawed, it does get some key components right. Its controls are very responsive and include options to assist younger or less experienced players and I saw firsthand the positive impact these had on my daughter's time with the game. It's incredibly cheery, has all of the characters that a fan of the show would expect to find and therefore uses its license well. Technically, it's a little rough around the edges and the compression for the speech sound bites is particularly bad, but younger players will not really notice these anyway. What cannot be overlooked though is the quite absurd price for a paltry 6 tracks. At £20, €25, Euros, dollars, this would have been quite an easy recommendation as a gift for children who love the show, but whoever has priced this has jumped the shark and hoped that with Christmas on the horizon, parents will pay whatever the asking price for a video game adaptation of their child's favourite show. The hard fact is that you can buy Mario Kart 8 for £5 more on Amazon or Sonic Racing for £12 less than the eShop price. If your child is an ardent fan and this is a must buy for them, at least search out the cheaper physical version. Don't pay this eShop price. Anyway, these are just the objective ramblings of a 30 something year old man. What did my daughter think of the game? What did you think about it mate? I like it because it helps me. <laughs> Whoa! Race with Ryan gets a switch up score of 58%. Many thanks as always for watching everybody, I hope you enjoyed this review and found it useful if you're looking for presents for children. As I say, it's not a bad game by any stretch, it's just too expensive in its current form on the eShop. Anyway, a quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care and until next time, happy gaming.
Well done. You're in trouble.